Hello everyone, my name is Vasco Elbrecht and I study at the Ruhr University Bochum. I'm writing my master thesis at the Department of Animal Ecology, Evolution and Biodiversity and my colleagues and me looked at the stonefly Dinocast cephalotis and its population structure in the Sauerland region. In the next three minutes we would like to show you our results and why they matter. Human activity has dramatically changed and fragmented our aquatic landscapes. Despite our efforts to restore the natural states of our rivers and streams, we often don't look at genetic data. Small and isolated populations often have very low genetic diversity and therefore they have problems to respond and to adapt to environmental changes. Dinocras cephalotis is an excellent indicator of good water quality. You will find it in cold, fast-running streams. We used molecular markers to find isolated populations and also to develop models for the dispersal abilities of this species. After sample collection and identification, we used the standard salt protocol to extract the DNA. We looked at two molecular markers, the mitochondrial barcoding gene CO1 and the nuclear ringnut gene. The sequences were processed in the computer and checked with different statistical methods. Here are our results. You see here the minimum spanning network for the marker CO1. We found two haplotype groups which were quite diverse. The two groups showed a sequence difference of 5%. This 5% difference could be explained by two effects. Populations could have been isolated in a glaciation event, but then had secondary contact and could still reproduce. The two haplotype groups could also be the result of a speciation event in the past. To test both hypotheses, we sequenced the nuclear marker ringless, which can be affected by ray combination. As samples from both C1 haplotype groups share the same ringless haplotype, we can conclude that individuals from both haplotype groups are interbreeding. Therefore, Dinocras cephalotis is a valid species. This map shows the distribution of the two haplotype groups, with each circle representing one population. By calculating FST values between populations, we were not able to find single isolated populations. However, an AMOVA test revealed that there is a very weak difference in variability between populations in the east and west. However, most of the variability is shared across all populations. In conclusion, we can say that Dinocras cephalotis has good dispersal abilities and populations can interbreed. However, this is not the end of our project. Over the next months, we're going to use some microsatellite markers that we have developed to verify our results. We would also like to have some additional Dinocras cephalotis samples from across Europe. So if you have some, we would appreciate if you get in touch with us. Also, I want to thank our project partners and I want to thank you for listening to this video.